All right, the people. So, um, hope you enjoyed Black Mirror um, episode three, Shut Up and Dance from season three. I just want to run you through some of the uh, audio codes to do with the show. So, um, two key words would be uh, diegetic sound um, and non diegetic sound. So, diegetic sound is sound that um, you hear in the scene as part of the mise en scène and that other characters can hear. So, the first example is when he's scraping the plates in the kitchen, that's kind of the biggest audio code that we get um, of him being in the kitchen, being at work and, and other sounds such as the soundtrack, so later in the episode when you hear the kind of mournful song playing at the end, that would be non diegetic sound. As I said, a couple of interesting sequences in terms of musical sen and the sound design. There's the title card and then So you get a lot of interesting sound effects um, of repeated scraping the plates. There's a radio you can hear quite faintly in the background of playing a kind of pop song, as well as the sizzling of the pans and the guys working at the kitchen. So you get a lot of audio codes. The primary one, though, the loudest one, is the scraping of that plate. So the next use of audio codes would be around when Kenny arrives home and the fact that his sister's playing quite loud music. And, you know, the representations in this are quite common of, of young people, so things like having streaming, um, kind of brother-sister banter, her calling him a bell end, and so on and so forth. And a bit later on when they're having tea um, in front of the telly. Do you know, kind of pop music video. Moving on further on in the episode, you get the first start of the music um, in terms of being quite menacing. So after he's used his laptop, that kind of do 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 rhythmic sort of pulsing sound. Now what's most interesting about this for me is it continues even beyond into the next scene. So even when it transitions into the next morning, um, after going through the kind of hellish emotions of realising what's happening to him, um, it goes right into the end of this scene. Confinement and what the hell have I done? Going into this scene too. You okay, yeah? No? Fine. So it's almost like a kind of insistent buzzing noise by the time it gets to that scene. It almost interrupts us watching and enjoying the scene um, until he kind of uh, goes on with his dialogue. So you hear the faint noise of a motorcycle coming up. And a nice kind of uh, symmetry of the leading line uh, of the wall going away there, the vastness of the kind of city and skyscape and the motorcycle coming up quite uh, speedily. So that's quite a nice shot choice really. And a bit further on, you get the weirdness of the story developing, you kind of the camera right coming out of the, the uh, door of the hotel, kind of the peephole point of view if you like really. Um, Interesting in terms of kind of narrative and stereotypes and that sort of thing. Um, the framing clearly, you know, the bag of underwear being shot for the guy. I've seen guy in a hotel room during the daytime, clearly kind of suggesting that he's there for an illicit meeting. Um, and then a bit further on, there's quite a good shot choice of as they're arriving into the village. Obviously, all the action kind of driving and all that sort of thing. Um, just about here somewhere. <laughs> So kind of tracking from the opposite lane, obviously. We're gonna make it, okay? Is this option? Kind of mid shots through the glass, you can see the rain on the outside of the windscreen and so on. Oh, this one, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we kind of added in uh, revving sound effects, quite a prominent. Nice fixed camera position there. So this one's the one we're talking about. So that one just there, kind of a bit of a dramatic zoom effect, so if the car's really speeding towards us in the village. Um, you'll often see that in things like Top Gear. Um, and it's just really effective in terms of conveying high speed, um, whereas all the other camera shots were kind of slowly panning or zooming as the car was coming through the road. Uh, but yeah, it's just really quite effective and, and nicely done. And then the last bit of audio code work I'm going to look at, uh, last two bits, excuse me, is when he walks into the bank, and also at the end when things go horribly wrong for everybody. Um, <laughs> So 
So um, what's really nice there is that kind of it almost goes to the classic underwater sound effect sort of thing where uh, everything slows down, the camera stays completely on him, tracks him through the scene, possibly a little bit of handheld camera movement, um, the breathing kind of through the nose and through the mouth, um, and everything slows down as though it's kind of leading up to this significant moment, of course, uh, which it does. Um, so it's quite a nice set of effects there. And then further on, one thing I did want to point out is that often lyrics will match the mood of the scene when it comes to choosing songs and soundtracks. Uh, so just here, when the man arrives home, just before he opens his bedroom door to see his wife, uh, who of course has found out the secret, um, the lyrics say something about all hell breaking loose, which is you know, quite a nice allusion to what's about to happen to him and everyone who's involved in this online uh, tracking, hacking situation. Today, we escape. We escape. and get dressed before. Interesting, one thing I did notice is that bars are absolutely everywhere in this thing. So as he walks up the stairs, um, let's see. So he gets in the door, walks up the stairs behind a set of bars. Now, this is something I noticed um, as I went through looking at particular scenes piece by piece. Um, come on. Where bars are absolutely everywhere in the mise en scene, um, even from the beginning. Um, I'll talk about all this later on. So this is the car park scene where the CEO of the um, hotel company drops off her car. Uh, this is kind of the opening establishing shot in many ways. Um, behind fences as he's rushing to and from work with his bike uh, and then rushing towards um, uh, crikey what was this? This was before picking up the cake. And then rushing again kind of behind straight bar fences. Um, minor detail. The bars just there as a kind of Glass frosted panels, bars again for the blinds, a physical barrier or gate to get into the field before the uh, fight to the death, and then the trees are kind of impeding his progress as well, as bars if you like. So what I'm saying really is that apart from the troll face ending, uh, bars are absolutely everywhere, so I think there's a lot of heavy foreshadowing going on in terms of um, him already being in prison even before the story kind of progresses and moves on, so he's already kind of in trouble as it were. Um, and then, of course, the meme, the troll face meme that gets text to everyone at the very end. Um, very much kind of, not comic relief necessarily, but uh, a bit of an in-joke to a younger audience that would recognise that as a, as a meme and recognise that as an online symbol of, you know, deliberately trolling, deliberately winding people up or whatever it might be. Um, and there's a sense of kind of really uh, anonymous, yeah, anonymous kind of bullying, really, in many ways. All right. Thanks very much. I hope that makes sense. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.